Hello, 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 and welcome. This is the Texas Live. I am Shane Moore. And I'm Sue Ellen. And we welcome you. This is going to be uh, part two of our quantum entanglement series, if you want to call it that, um, with um, a new quantum theory. Uh, your mind exists in another dimension and we will talk about how um, recent research into consciousness in light of quantum physics and neuroscience um, that a new theory has emerged of a mental field which we each have is ex existing in another dimension and behaving in some ways like a black hole, uh, which is very interesting. And um, also in the news yesterday was um, scientists actually captured the first the first picture of quantum entanglement. Uh, so so it's no longer a theory; it's a it's a fact and. We will get into exactly what that means, and um, of course, it's what Einstein called spooky action at a, at a distance. No matter how far away the um, the two get that are entangled, they um, they seem to follow each other. I mean, m uh, you know, mimic each other like they are literally connected in. That's as weird weird as it sounds. That's exactly what it means. So, um, very strange times that we live in. But we were just talking about how that um, that this is this is going to explain a lot of things. Um, I think that um, that the one thing that that this you know talks about that it um, that it acts in uh, you know many ways like a black hole. Talking about how that it's uh, shaped like a double torus and um, and you seemingly moves up and down at the same time um, in and out. So it sounds to me like that it's it's uh, you know collapsing on itself into a from a wave into a particle back into a wave to a particle I mean if that makes sense like it's um, somehow oscillating or um, going back and forth but um, yeah it's um, it's uh, you know seemingly both at the same time and there again we're talking about the human mind um, being uh, you know, separate from from the brain, and uh, we will we will get into that when we come back. Um, we will take a short break and allow listeners who want want to join our live chat to do so, and encourage those of you that are listening to do so. Um, take a short break, and we'll be right back. So. Feel free to join us. I've seen those faces. I've heard all the lies. But you ain't gazing on someone in denial. Cause you want dollar bills right now But you gotta work real hard I know you want it to be easy So let your guard down And I said See it in your mind Trust that Have what it takes inside 
back. Hello, Elaine. Glad you joined us. Got several others on, on the way, so now talking t- tonight about the quantum entanglement, um, how it says that uh, your mind may be in another dimension. I know I've felt like that many times, so maybe this is the explanation. But um, for many things, not just that, but um, this um, this actually says um, it says um, Australian philosopher and cognitive scientist David Chalmers once phrased the question: How can something immaterial, like subjective experience and self-consciousness, arise from a material brain? says, um, Chalmers and countless other philosophers and scientists throughout the ages have battled the, with this question to end all questions, and we still don't have a clear answer. Today, philosophers and scientists are involved in rigorous research on consciousness, and now, at the confluence quantum physics and neuroscience, a theory emerges of a mental field which we have existing in another dimension and behaving in some ways like a black hole reports Tara Michaelsack at Epoch Times. And then it goes on to say, to ask the question, what is the connection between the brain and the mind? Where is the mind located? And this goes back a long way. This is the age-old question. It says, uh, Dr. Dirk K.F. Meyer, a professor at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands, published an article in the September 2017th edition of Neuroquantology that reviews and expands upon the current theories of consciousness that arrive from the meeting of neuroscience and quantum physics. He writes, Our brain is not a standalone information processing organ. It acts as a central part of our integral nervous system with recurrent information exchange with the entire organism and the cosmos. In this study, the brain is conceived to be embedded in a holographic structured field that interacts with resonant sensitive structures in various cell types in our body. Essentially, Meyer hypothesizes that our consciousness exists in a field surrounding the brain. This field is in another dimension. It shares information with the brain through quantum entanglement, among other methods, and has certain similarities with a black hole. 
Information comes together and interacts in the brain more quickly than can be explained by our current understanding of neural transmissions in the brain. It thus seems the mind is just more than just neurons firing in the brain, reports Makasak. So it um, talks about that um, our mind, how it may explain how the mind processes information um, and how that they believe that our consciousness could be sharing information with the brain through quantum entanglement. Um, and this, this goes back to the poem, you know, William Blake wrote um, about the about us being part of the universe, the universe being inside of us, um, us being in the universe, and so on. Um, I think that this may be what what he was talking about, um, you know, as far as the... It's, it's really hard to explain, but it's, it sounds to me like... And we're surely now beginning, we're going to find out, too. It's like every... Every department of science is now coming to the same question. Yes, and for some <laughs> for some reason, I was drawn to this quantum entanglement big time, mm -hmm. and and uh, just yesterday, hey Patricia, glad you joined us. Patricia. Just um, yesterday, they um, scientists were finally able to um, take an actual photograph of quantum entanglement uh, the I mean it's an actual photograph of it taking place and so it's no longer a theory I mean it's a fact and um, this is this is really really big news I mean it's it's um, I think it's going to explain a lot of things um, maybe even Things that we um, view as, you know, being paranormal or spooky, like Einstein said, you know, I think that it could could explain um, could explain love, you know. I mean, could explain um, seemingly, uh, you know, uh, twin twin flames, um, like you know, somebody that you meet and you just just know, I mean, you know, seemingly. Um, Patricia, I will send you the picture. And Al Elaine, I'll send you the picture too. Yeah, so this is, um, this is something that, that, um, that, you know, could, 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 could explain so, so many things. I mean, like, um, the, who, who knows? I mean, it could explain good and evil, you know? Um, you know, light and darkness. I mean, maybe is there, is there life after? Right, right. After. Everything. I mean, this is as far as I can see. I mean, it. Uh, like you said, is there life after death? Well, can does consciousness travel faster than the speed of light? Right. Is consciousness above and superior to nation to uh, natural law or nature. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that that's one reason why that Einstein found it spooky is because it it did travel faster than than light, you know, than the speed of light. I think that that's why that it, you know, that he he said that. that it was just you know something that was was too spooky for him, um, but now you know people said well he just didn't un understand it. I think that he did. I think that it's not because he did not understand it is why that that it frightened him or that it disturbed him. I think it's because well, being he did. right is what being right is what scared him. Right, right, knowing knowing that it was true is what scared him um, because <laughs> Einstein wasn't um, wasn't weak in that uh, you know as far as you know physics I mean 
my gosh. But, um, and two, I mean, I kind of find it, uh, you know, strange that, you know, Tesla never talked about quantum physics. Maybe he did, but, um, in, in his own way, but I don't, I don't really recall Tesla ever talking about it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he said, you know, think of things in vibration and frequency, which is, um, basically. Right, and if everything's connected by a cord, Mm -hmm. right? Right. Vibrate that cord, it goes along the whole um, entire length of the cord. There was this, um, was this, uh, you know, one, um, was, was this, uh, you know, YouTube video, and it said, said, um, Tesla, Tesla was, um, in communication with dimensional entities is where he got all of his information, and I'm thinking, they said he was in league with the devil and all this stuff, and I'm thinking, my God, are you serious? I mean, this guy was, like, wanting to give to the world, I mean, and, and these people are calling him evil and, you know, saying that he was, um, that, that he had, you know, the destruction of mankind on his mind, and I'm thinking, I Well, that I, was just, and that was propagated by his, um, competitors. Right, right, like... Not by people, the people don't know anything except what's in the newspapers, what's in their mainstream news. Right, but I'm talking like the, uh, you know, comments and everything, it's like, it's like how you, uh, you know, you really need to read up on Tesla because he was, I mean, I mean, as far as, you know, destroying mankind, I mean, he, he was wanting to, you know, give to the world, I mean, freely. Patricia, you say, I just looked at it on, oh my God... Yeah, I mean that's that's got it's got huge Im- implications for everything. And what what is amazing about that is that they they have you know what since gosh, I mean this was first you know theorized in what the gosh, like a hundred years ago, and they're just now getting a picture of it. So, one, one, you know, question that I have is, or one, you know, theory, is that this very thing where, where it says that, that the mind is, um, actually exists in another dimension, and that it's, you know, very much like a black hole I'm thinking okay does it uh, draw in information from this dimension from another dimension and could that be connected to another dimension you know right is another dimension feeding off of us are we feeding off of another or are we feeding off of each other Right, it would be like, um, like, or is it that, like that scary world that needs that uh, needs to stay in its own dimension, but is there to maybe keep the balance? Right. Well, um, well, uh, you know, one thing that would be very, very profound is is when when uh, they when these uh, you know physicists have have these uh, you know theories and. Some, some, some even sketch them, you know, they draw them or whatever, you know. And then, like, I don't know, like a hundred years later, they have this picture, like, was in the news yesterday morning that I just now sent to uh, Patricia and Elaine. And it's like, wow. I mean, they saw this, you know, they saw this through mathematic equations and things. I mean, I don't know how that works, but anyway, I, it's very impressive, <laughs> to say the least. But, see, uh, Patricia, you say, so Shane, if this explained twin flames or soulmates or whatever have you, would you believe in it or would you still be iffy? I hope I don't sound like I'm trying to spark controversy, but I'm interested on this. 
if it becomes truth or whatever, would you accept it? Of course, yeah, yeah. I'm, I am not infallible. I can be wrong. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. I've been wrong many times. I could be wrong about that, and I'm not saying that I don't believe in it. I mean, I'm just, just very. Be wrong about what? You're saying that you don't believe in it. About twin, twin flames, or you know, soulmates. Um, I, I guess what what I don't um, what I don't like or what I don't believe in is when someone tells you they're your soulmate and they're trying to convince you. I think that if it's a true soulmate, if if it's you know someone that you're supposed to be with, that neither one of you has to say anything because you both know but so many times it's it's one you know seemingly one person that's trying to convince the other that I'm your soulmate you know we're meant to be together and um no 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 I did say that I said that I didn't uh, you know believe in a twin in twin flames um where Twin flames are the uh, you know definition is uh, you know, somewhat different. It's supposedly the same soul that was split. Now I don't believe in that, but as far as soulmates, if you don't believe in the same soul split, and we have uh, the right and the left hemisphere, two different um, sexes split apart and then connected in our brain. The possibility. Well, I think. Be possible. I think within the within that context, yes. But as far as as the you know soul itself, you know, splitting and becoming two uh, you know, separate people, I I just don't you know believe in that. Um, now soul mates. Uh, well, how about two people um, that having to part? Do the same thing. Like- their brain splitting they had to part had to leave each other well find each other again one day well yeah I guess so I'm not so. saying that I know any better of the answer but well you know what one is better than well I I uh, you know think that a person's you know soul is is their core or soul and I mean, I'm not saying that I know for sure, but um, that's just my belief. That's just my view on it. Um, But I'm more... They when they were married, they become one soul. Right. I guess as far as the twin flames, uh, with with this entanglement, uh, you know, quantum entanglement uh, being, being now... Um, true. Any, I mean, prior, being, being any prior knowledge, right? <laughs> right. It, it could even be with your um, your nemesis. It kind of uh, changes changes my views on a lot of things. I mean, like I said, um, that that could explain, you know, the age old question: Why is there evil in the world? Well, could it be that good and evil are entangled? And you know they're in this, they're in this forever battle, or you know seemingly battle. Um, but they both uh, power the machine. Right, right. They're both, they're both being used to power. Them. Right, and what what does that mean? It means that there's something bigger. <laughs> there's something that that good and evil is just part of the equation. And that, this is the way I see it, is that, that there's, there's not meant, seemingly there's not meant to be a balance. It's always meant to be imbalanced. Um, because if it was balanced, then there would be... There, there would be peace, right? I mean, there would, you know, um, 
maybe it will be someday, but... There'd as, be peace, there'd be no movement, and there'd right. be not the life that we're experiencing, because there wouldn't be the oscillating of atoms. Right, it would be... Vibrating. It would be boring, or it would be dead or frozen, and... Um, but as far as it's unbalanced, then there's there's uh, room for um, growth and... Well, it's not that it's unbalanced, it's just like a battery, that's very balanced. <laughs> the negative and the positive, it's actually... Yeah, it's like very a dance, balanced. the yin-yang. Um, mm -hmm. It's very interesting. But, like you said, I mean, it could be, I mean, I mean it could answer so many things. And then, then we, uh, you know, get into um, the one dimension above the brain or surrounding the brain. But I'm, you know, thinking, well, well, does it, uh, you know, does it, you know, carry... Or does does it connect to these other dimensions and things? Hey, Jacob, glad you joined us. Um, so, so the um, this goes on to say um, says um, says our brain is not a standalone information processing organ. I see. I already read that, and I. I think that that is, you know, saying that the brain is is like an interface that that it um, is a you know conduit works um, works just like the like a computer, yeah, or you know picks up the. Wi-Fi or you know whatever the you know signal, uh, the vi vibration or whatever. But it says that um, it says um, our consciousness could be sharing information with the brain through quantum entanglement. Um, quantum entanglement is the phenomenon in which particles appear to be connected over vast distances. When actions are performed on one of the particles, corresponding changes are observed in the other simultaneously. This would allow for rapid processes like the fast exchange of information between consciousness and the brain, rapid processes which can't be explained with classical physics. Um, and then it says, In quantum mechanics, electrons and photons exist in the form of waves but can also behave like particles. In a manner of speaking, they are both waves and particles, at the same time. And then it goes on to say that um, the mental field is non-material and at the same time physically part of the brain. So it's both a wave and a particle, just on a different scale. It says it is directly dependent on the brain physiology, but not reducible to it. He goes into links on the non-materialistic aspect of our mental workings, writing the implicit suggestion of non-material and extracorporeal mental workspace that supervenes our neural system and provides the dominant part of self-consciousness, the big eye, that acts in addition to our daily experience conscious state, the small eye, is supported by earlier and also more recent observations in the FNMR studies that long-term memory is not correlated with scaled size sizes of the brain. So, so it's the it's the big eye, the dominant part of the self-consciousness, and the small eye, the um, consciousness that acts in addition to our daily state, conscious state. In other words, the size of the brain has nothing to do with how much information it can store. So that's that's saying so quite a lot. The size of your pocket. Guys. What now? Sit on the <laughs> Elaine says reboot time. <laughs> says um. What does this mental field or mind, what does the mind itself look like? 
and uh, it says Meyer says that it could take the shape of a torus or a double torus. Uh, basically, the mind takes the shape of a donut. The dictionary definition of the sp- specific shape requires a top-rate IQ to decipher. Um, it's a double vortex torus, a geometry that may mimic a combination of transversal, longitudinal, and circular waves. It's it's really it's really neat. Um, it it turns in and turns out on on itself, and um, which is um, I think Dan Winters calls it. Um, oh really? Oh man, sorry about that, Lane. She says you start talking, it goes quiet. I'll be back later after every re- reboot. I can hear you for about a minute, then it goes quiet. Right. Oh, she meant literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I thought that you were joking, talking about the mind, but you you were you were being literal, so. <laughs> So that's, um, so it, uh, Dan Winter, I think is his name. Um, very interesting. Yeah, Dan Winter. Dan Winter talks about the, um, let's see, what's it called? The implosion, um, how it, uh, you know, how the, um, mind or the cell, and I mean, he he really goes into some deep, deep stuff. I mean, way beyond. Uh, yeah, that. I mean, he talks as if he's a physicist, and he talks so fast. Yes, I mean, it's like it's like you you he goes have into to slow alternate, it down. Yeah, alternate energy, and he goes into the histories of you know mankind, and goes into like the races and the reptilians. Yeah, and yeah, he's he the he is Atlanteans, like, and he knows about <laughs> everything. He's like way up there. I mean, it's like, and I forgot about him. And the way that he talks, it's just matter of factly, and he talks really fast, like like you know, Sue Ellen said. And but but he he just doesn't get it that you know that most people they need need to be you know taken slow through this because you know we're not. I mean, we're not on his level, so it's it's um, it's really hard to you know keep up. But he knows the faster you go, the slower you age. <laughs> I guess it's the same. The same is the faster you you leave Earth, the quicker gravity. He um, gravity flows, right? He talks about fractals and um, fractals. Talks yes, fractals, and he talks about um, the um, Mandelbrot. Yeah, I um, have one up on my wall. How how it uh, you know at the quantum level, you you can just keep going on and on and on to infinity. You know, you never reach reach zero or you know you never reach the um base um reality was it the same thing looking in a mirror when you see yourself well it would be um he he talks about uh the dna bliss and that's uh you can you know google Dan Winter DNA Bliss and um, or DNA Fusion in the Heart uh, Fusion in the Blood and like I said he gets into implosion physics which is um, which he says oh, that yeah, and, he, and then he has those apps he would always talk about mm-hmm. some app that you can get that reads your blood and he says that um, the real Holy Grail is in your DNA. Dan Winter's implosion, um, Golden Mean dot info. It's it's really really interesting to um, read his 
stuff and listen to him. Um, and, and he talks about fractals, DNA, and the golden ratio. He's really big on the golden ratio. So, um, And like I said, the golden ratio is the equation. It's the number that holds everything together in the universe, the world, and e- even, you know, quantum physics. I mean, it just... And he talks about the purpose of DNA, portal to ascension. Yeah, very, very interesting. So check check out Dan Winter. And um, also check out Stan Tenen. Um, T-E-N-E-N. Uh, he's, he's very... Um, Stanley. Knowledgeable, too. Maybe Stanley. I just have, have Stan Tenen. And he he talks about how the Hebrew letters, how the uh, 22 Hebrew letters, um, they you know, correlate with our you know DNA, um, with our 22 chromosomes and actually 23, but um, wow. yeah. And um, Stan. Stan Tenen and Dan Winter are kind of at odds with each other, so don't let that throw you off. But kind of like some copyright issues, and um, yeah, yeah, they're you know kind of in, kind of have been in an argument for quite some time. But don't let that you know keep you from learning from from their stuff because it's very very good. But, um, yeah, so, so, you know, Stan Tenen talks about the Hebrew alphabet, which correlates to the 22 amino acids that we have and to the, the, to the you know, chromosomes that we have, which leads back to the Kabbalah, which talked, talked about the quantum entanglement, quantum physics, uh, over 3,000, 4,000 years ago. Wow, isn't that crazy? In the 26th and the... What now? The 26th, the 26th and the... I can barely hear you. The, 20, the number 26 in our alphabet and then the 22 in the Hebrew and you think of all the important things. Right. Wow. Right, and um, with the Hebrew alphabet, I mean, each letter is is just a volume of data within itself. I mean, just the letter itself is just, it just, there's so much within that. But uh, Stan Tenen, T-E-N-E-N, he, uh, I think his website is maru, M-E-R-U dot org. But he goes into how the uh, cymatics, I believe it's called, the sound, how, how that you can take, you know, sand and you place it on, on a flat surface like a mirror or whatever. And, and you, yes, thank you. And you, um, you know, play like, you know, different tones and, um, he has, has, you know, shown that, that the Hebrew letters actually are, you know, formed from that sand through that, um, that cymatics or, or whatever it's called. It's, it's r- really, really interesting. And then when you take tones and... You take tones and then you take the S from tones, put it in front, stone, and um, Jesus, you know, saying, you know, in the uh, you know, Bible, when the uh, you know, people told him, when the uh, you know, Pharisees told him, said, you know, tell these people to be quiet, you know, and he says, if, if I do, he says, even these rocks will cry out, even these stones will cry out. And it's like, whoa, you know, 
that's that's saying <laughs> that's that's really really deep but that's what he's saying he's saying even these stones will cry out well you take the sand you take the tones uh, what is that well it's a stone you know tones whatever it's what he's saying he's saying hey there's a, there's a lot more here than you than you think you know and man is that yeah, ever the you truth? just imagine if you had that like in the Egyptian days with huge blocks and you can get that kind of like through metallic you know whatever they had iron and, oh, yeah. and had huge uh, you know where you can make a tone oh yeah a bell sound make a ring and you can you imagine and I'm sure they probably found out found out by accident and watched it shake everything right and watched rake a rock shake and then they realize they can do all this right from sound well um just on, like Tesla said on um on a, one of the um shows it was like gosh like 15 years ago they they had this um this these uh, people that were moving these blocks or attempting to move these blocks that I think they were like five five hundred pound you know blocks of granite or whatever and um what was weird was um was this one guy they 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 had like these huge trumpets massive trumpets and there were like seven and um seven or ten I don't remember what it was but they had them pointed at this you know stone and they started like playing you know blowing into them or whatever and it started this this enormous this very loud sound very powerful and that stone started started shaking I mean it started resonating with that and I think that it started you know lifting off off of the ground and it was really something that's, that's why they went around the house and put the, was it the house of Jericho Jericho and put it the all walls down. of Jericho yes they 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 stomped and it went around and around vibrating so it, so it, they brought down all the walls right and wonder that could be with cymatic it could be uh, you know there's there's a lot of people that say that 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 never took place, you know, that it's, and that it was impossible, but. Uh, yeah, the same people that were telling us that, like, quantum entanglement wasn't right, real. Right, right. They were finding out it just meant that they were pointing one way versus pointing another way, and we were catching it from a different right. angle. Or, yeah, so, so, yeah, I mean, that could, that could very easily be it, that just a certain frequency or whatever. But, um, now, you know, think about, um, Ed Lee. Well, that's where they need to get things in computers, right? They for the you need to have your um, you need to have the sound before you can have the rep, the replication of it. Right. Well, uh, you know, think about um, Ed Lee Scallion down in Florida, um, Homestead, Florida, with Coral Castle. I mean, this guy was from. Lithuania, he weighed about 100 pounds. He was a very tiny, small man. And he built Coral Castle and moved these these huge pieces of coral um, and built this, built these monuments that are still there. And the, um, the door, it's this huge stone door that's, I think it weighs like, um, I don't know, like 7,000 pounds, maybe maybe more. But he positioned that, that stone door, set it to such a precise degree that a child can take their finger and push it and it opens, you know. And they ask him how he did it and he said that that he knew the secrets of how the pyramids were built and that's all he would say and no one ever saw him um, actually working 
but they, um, well. I mean, he would make everybody drop everything off in front and right. just leave it there, not help him in or right. anything, and just hold everybody to leave. Yes, and um, they, you know, said that they would see a tripod that he he would have like a tripod, but they never saw him, you know, working, actually moving the you know, stones or whatever. But there were some children, there were some kids that said that they saw him and he was supposedly playing like a flute or something. And, and I don't know if that's true or not, but um, that he was playing, making tones and, you know, moving these blocks and um, which or these massive stones massive pieces of coral that were just, I mean, huge. And um, it's very strange, it's very interesting to read about him because he, you know, said that he was um, building that for his Sweet 16, and it, he was somehow jilted at the altar and had his heart broken or something, and I was, you know, building this for his, um, for his love, you know, that, mm-hmm. and, um, there's... So he thought he could impress her. Right. It's really sad, you know, but, um, he, his, um, he has this, you know, telescope, I think it's like, I don't know, like 12 tons or something, you know, this, you know, telescope, and it points at... A certain star, um, I, I, I don't remember which one it is, but anyway, it points at a certain star set, and then there's one that uh, the moon, it's like a half crescent moon, that, you know, at certain times of the month, the moon sets in that crescent. I mean, you know, guy was brilliant and very, very mysterious. So, mm-hmm. um, very strange. So and, uh, one of the they've never been able to figure out. That's right. He he had a a um some some kind of a um a cam wheel or or you know a a flywheel and um, someone that's very very mechanical may you know look at that and say oh, okay you know that's a that's a flywheel but there's something about it that's different from regular flywheels or whatever and um what's a flywheel they said that it was his you know secret to be honest with you i don't know um that's just what they call it um something that 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 he would turn like a that had a a a, a you know, handle that that he could place on it like a ratchet, oh, and he like would turn it. it like yeah, yeah, he yeah. would crank it, and they're they're saying that that maybe that it built up a tone or a tune or a certain frequency to where he a could tune. move these stones and a tune raw. <laughs> Do what now? <laughs> a tune, you know, at and raw. Right. <laughs> Okay, I hope it does, Elaine. She said, let's see if it'll work for me this time. Yeah, we were talking about Ed Lee Scallion down at um, Coral Castle that moved those huge, um, you know, carved coral, like massive tonnage of, you know, stones that he moved. And this guy was like just a very, very small little man and very interesting but supposedly homestead you know florida is on 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 a certain um vortex or certain there's a certain power um latitude longitude there Mm -hmm. and they you know talked about that when he first moved there that that was like swamp but but he knew that that's where he needed to be and they're like 
why do you want to be in this, you know, this swamp? And he says, you know, well, it's where I need to be. And um, I don't think that he ever learned how to how to drive. They said that he rode a bike everywhere. He's very eccentric, um, but incredibly intelligent. I mean, certainly knew things that most people will never know, so... Um, but anyway, that's that's another thing is is that once you see the uh, you know double Taurus working, you're you know thinking about the you know frequencies. Could you send one frequency up and one frequency down, and maybe this is what I'm thinking. Maybe when you have both, you know, frequencies going up, one going down, when they meet, maybe they cancel each other. And could that could that possibly make the stone or whatever, could it somehow make it neutral to where it weighs nothing? Just, just a thought. But... I'm thinking of it as there's a positive and and a negative pole on, you know, that block or, you know, whatever mass there is. And and if so, then then you could, you know, in my mind, you could take, you could, uh, you know, start a frequency up. Of course, it would come down, up and down, and then start one that would be reverse to that or I should say opposite to that and then somewhere they would meet no matter if it was in the middle or where but they would meet and that would either cause them to resonate or they would uh, cancel each other out but the way that I see it is that you know whether they cancel each other out or they resonated it would it would render that block or whatever maybe to nothing i mean or at least to where you could move it with ease but um seems to be like that that's what he did now i don't know how he did it but i would sure like to know um, Okay, we're we're going to take a short break, and um, when when we come back, we will continue um, with this. Jacob, you said the kids that saw him said he was using ice cream cones. Wow. <laughs> okay, well, we will come right back, and we'll talk about that. See you in three minutes.
Okay, Jacob, you said that they find stones all over the world. They're shaped like ice cream cones. They think that somehow they resonate right frequency to move things. Interesting. The ice cream cones, um, shaped like ice, ice cream cones, that, that would be, um, I suppose they're, they, they would be facing down, right? Or, um, well, I mean, they would most likely be. It's very strange. Uh, that would be... And that uh, makes me think about um, where they're, you know, pointed. Are are they pointed to, like, certain stars or... Um, that be, like, wands or... A, right. Um, like... like or a ping pong paddles. Right. Or... Or... Could could they possibly be, um, you know, pointed in in the earth, like you know Tesla talked about, you know, as, as you know, as far as putting, uh, you know, finding that you know frequency in the earth. Very interesting, but shaped like ice cream cones. Hmm. That um, seems like an an antenna or something like that. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, especially if it was, you know, pointed towards a, a certain, you know, constellation or, or whatever. But, um... Well, like the Baphomet, it has one pointed up and one pointed down. Right. Yep. That's... That may be... Maybe what it's saying, but walk left and you get the just like that. Yeah. yeah. Pointed up, pointed down. That's what I was just talking about as far as that you know that you know, double tour so that it's not sent Jacob, mm-hmm. Elaine and uh, Patricia. Um is is how that those those two could could possibly be placed on a stone and meet and then neutralize each other. Or you know resonate with each other, and possibly like electrify or magnetize that entire stone. Now I don't know the exact um, how how that's done, but um, but you know some of the people that that you know talked about uh, uh, you know Coral Castle 
they talked about, um, they said that he worked in the dark, but that there was light, and they didn't necessarily see him him with a lantern or anything like that, that, I don't know, he, you know, seemingly made his own light somehow. Just very, very mysterious. So, but, um, Jacob, you said that he, um, let's see what you said as far as the kids that saw him said he was using ice cream cones. So was he using these, these, um, these, you know, stones or, <laughs> uh, ice cream cones, stones would have to be, well, I mean, if it was him using those stones, they would have to be very small. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering. Because uh, that's the first time that I've heard that. But, um... Well, tuning fork. Right. Right, I didn't even think about that. A tuning fork. There, um... There have been several people that I've, you know, talked to that that uh, they, you know, talked about how that, um, that, uh, you know, many people are finding, um, help for, you know, pain and everything with a simple tuning fork, just, you know, resonating with that, with their pain or whatever. Um, I don't know, but it makes sense to me as far as that goes, but, um, this is, um, this, uh, you know, goes on to say... a lot of silica. What now? Oh, okay. The stones contain a lot of silica. Okay. Well, a lot of silica. I, I just know that they're heavy. <laughs> and, um, with the... Granite, as 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 far as the uh, you know, pyramids, I mean that they they they're very conductive as far as the um, you know electromagnetic fields go. But I'm not so sure about coral. I mean I don't know know for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know about who knows now because it's I mean it looks. Oh, right. Oh. Right. Okay. Just a Okay, but um, yeah, yeah. You said I'm not sure. That's just what the kids said when their parents asked them if they saw him, how he was doing it. They said he, they didn't know, but he was using ice cream cones. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just imagine that he probably, yeah, well, that's exactly what I was using was ice cream cones. You know, probably grinning from ear to ear. Um, no, from he played a lot of tricks on the kids too. Yeah, I bet. I bet he did. But um yes, um very very eccentric little man and uh, just um said that he that he knew the secrets of how the pyramids were constructed, which is I have no idea how how he would know, but um, they uh, you know, said that he was a man of few words. Well, okay. And so he had pressure to keep it if they, anybody really knew it was legit. What now? If anybody really knew it was legit, they wouldn't let him keep going like that unless they had, uh, for sure, had a gag order on him. Right. And he went to yeah, because, I mean, it would be like, uh, you know, my God, I mean, if you knew 
the secrets, you know, if if you knew how to move, you know, stones like that. I mean, that would be something that that the powers yeah, that be would not want to get good. out. You know, that's certainly something that that they want to keep private. I know Zahi Hawass over in Egypt, the Antiquities Department, and he he was just so, I mean, he was so rabid about how how he they uh, you know, said that he was just would would not allow any you know, test to be done or you know it, it he had to be there and had to approve of every test and um they finally fired him i believe and um you know he was he was just no he's still going he was just on the um oh what's the show i'm explaining uh, still discovery zahi hawass is is um is uh, still in yeah, still in he, power? He had him on TV. As far as I know, he was on TV with Jeff. And I don't know. I heard that he was, um, that they got rid of him. Now, I'm, I may be wrong, but. Um, I could, I, maybe I had the wrong name. Let me see. Um, okay. Zahi Hawass um, is an Egyptian archaeologist, Egypt, Egyptologist, and former Minister of State for an the Antiquities Affairs. Um, he's 72. Um, And former Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs. Um, it says, uh, The long reigning king of Egyptian antiquities has been forced into exile, but he's plotting a return. <laughs> so, who knows? He's not even a lot. Yep, there he is. He's already done it. Listen to this. Expedition Unknown, Egypt Live, uncovered 2,500-year-old space mummy during broadcast. Um, audiences from around the world would with, uh, witness history. Egyptian archaeologist first 25-year-old mummy and high priest. It is a discovery, blah, 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 an adventure. Um, yeah. Trying to find out where it says his name, but it says his name here. Let's see. He did a show. Dr. Hwas revealed to Josh Gates for the very first time a mysterious wax head that they believe is the mold of Ert Hurwa, one of the high priests. This extraordinary wax head is the exact cast of a 25-year-old high priest mummy. Yep, he did make his uh, way back. Well, it says, um, he, he, Lane says he was kicked out. She says now it's Tamer Mosin. And, um, well, I he thought, did. Hawass did the broadcast that they just had on Expedition Unknown. I just watched it. Okay. Well, I remember that 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 he was you know kicked out, and um, but um, I don't know. He might have worked his way back in. To that, um, I have no idea, but um, but but uh, you know he he just you know wanted to to um, make sure that 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 he was there and that he was in charge and blah blah blah. So anyway, I don't know. I just heard much talk about him, but. Um, Anyway, and now uh, they were always talking about him on um, Coast to Coast. Mm. Zahi Was. Oh, that was him. 
Mm -hmm. oh, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, Art and, um, and and even George Nori, they were talking about, they said, you know, <laughs> um, that, um, well, not, not, not so much Art, but, you know, George Nori was like, what is his problem? <laughs> because, I mean, I, I think that he even chewed out George Nori about something, you know, and George Nori was like, good grief, man, you <laughs> know. He's like, really? take a chill oh, pill or okay. something. Yeah, yeah. He got really, really upset with George Nori about something on some kind of in, some kind of interview or something. And uh, George Nori was like, man. He says, you know, he says, he says, there was you know somebody that was on that was you know saying that that they had a run in with him. And George Nori says, hey, he says, he says he even like you know jumped on to me. And he said, and I, you know. And, I don't know. Um, I th I think that he 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 had a stake in um, certain certain parts of that, and I'm not going to go into it. But if you look online, you will see some of the things that that he he was um, accused of. So I'm just not going to go into that. But anyway. Um, Oh, okay. So there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot more that I'm not going to go into. I'm not going to talk about anybody like that because I don't personally know. But there's a lot of controversy around him. Um, so, but anyway, um, so this this goes on to say what what does the mind itself look like or this mental field? And it says um, basically the mind takes the shape of a donut. And um, that you know, double vortex torus, and um, it says um, that it's um, it may turn out that quantum physics, the torus, and the mental field are all related. And then again, it may be a while before we fully understand the relationship, but that it um, it may have um, that that it certainly has uh, the appearance and the actions of a black hole, um, which is very strange because that's something else that was in the news yesterday was, um, was that they, they have you know, found this, um, this black hole that is that is so massive, so huge, that it should not be. They said that it was going to, um, to completely... Mars, right? Yes, that, that these two black holes were on a collision course and that they're so large, they're so massive, that they were going to change, you know, change the you know, physics... As we know it now, or as we don't know it, <laughs> and, it seems um, like a lot in physics is going to be changed. Yeah, I mean, shortly. yesterday, I mean, had so much happening. Yesterday, you had the first quantum entanglement, you know, picture, and now these two black holes are. And I'm talking; it is like 480 million miles wide. One. One black hole is supposedly 480 million miles wide, and they said it was just a monster. Hey, Mona. Hi, Mona. Said it was just, you know, but when these two um, collide, that it was going, that they would go into a death spiral and become one, and that's going to be... That's going to be something. I mean, it really is because you don't really see black holes, but you see their effect. But I wonder when when two actually collide. Eventually fight. Yeah. I wonder if you can see it then. You know, if you can. It's, uh, it's just. Um, what did you say? It was like Jacob. Reminded you of Jacob wrestling with the angel. Right. Yeah. Which was. Um, which is, you know, something else that that was um, that was described in the Kabbalah as a type of quantum entanglement, 
um, Jacob wrestling with the angel, and then you have these two black holes. One one's really super massive, and one's massive, but not not as massive. But they're on on a collision course. Now I don't know how long that's going to take. I mean, but um, it's definitely not going to be boring. And um, but this was um, this was all explained in certain you know terms, certain different terms, um, like three you know four thousand years ago or longer um, by the Kabbalah. I mean, it you know talked about the subatomic particles and talked about the universe and the um, beginnings and what what the you know secret was and the big secret that that's uh, still um, it's it's just amazing I mean is that everything is um, is that this world is a simulation it's not real it's just a test and um, it's an illusion and that um, but within the illusion that the individual molecules can be changed or can be manipulated by the Hebrew alphabet by certain enchantments um, incantations from the Hebrew alphabet which would be what? tones vibration um, you know frequency and um, so so that's that's that proves or proves proves for me that there's something there. I mean, that's that's um, worth looking into. And the um, Knights, you know, Templar that went to the went to uh, you know Jerusalem during the Crusades and um, went to you know protect you know travelers from robbers and um, things. Well, it you know turns out that they were actually there digging, excavating, searching for uh, the supposed Holy Grail, and I think they dug for like nine years and they found a lot of things. But when they found the Holy Grail, supposedly they went back to Europe and were very very rich, or they're not down, but the Nice Templar order was ex exceedingly rich, and um, it's been said that it wasn't a real cup or anything like that, but it was um, just very high knowledge of um, of these um, different laws and ways. Uh, basically, this advanced technology on and you know secret about how that this was a this wasn't real this was a simulation and that's my question is is um seemingly after that is when these when the masons you know started building these huge cathedrals like um like the um Notre Dame you know cathedral that just burned I mean, that thing is massive. I'm talking, you know, huge, beyond belief. And um, I'm thinking, how did these men know how to build that? And not only that, but they built uh, the uh, Hagia uh, Sophia in uh, instant, um, what am I Denmark. saying? Yeah. Hagia. Yeah. Hagia Sophia, thank you, and Istanbul, and it's like, it's it's a dome, it's a dome roof, 
massive. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And these these were men that this was like built in. Um, I don't know how how old old it is, but it is. It's like one of the oldest, and it's a dome roof. And those of you that know about architecture, I mean, a dome roof is, you know, it's not something that that you know people build and just you know it's not just a simple or complex. It's a, it's very complex, very very, you know, you have to know exactly what you're doing. And they built this thing, and it is massive. Matter of fact. It was built to um, to take to withstand and actually move with the earth during earthquakes. Now, I mean, that's that's some advanced technology <laughs> for back yeah. then. I mean, if for for uh-huh. now, it even is. But yeah, that's a that's another mystery in itself is how that was built, and it's. It it is like like it was built on stilts, like it moves with the earth because there's seemingly a lot of earth earthquakes over there. See, see, Elaine, you say they were they were speaking of rebuilding Notre Dame. They were saying that there are not any more trees that are tall enough to accommodate the tresses in the cathedral, and that is that's kind of sad. Um, but man, that's something. Just um, but um. So it um. So it goes on to say, as far as this goes, that um. That with the um. It says that um that they're, you know, waiting to um, see how the, um, how that it all, how the mental field and the mind and this, um, what it connects to, um, how they can, you know, find out how it interrelates, and I have no doubt that they will. seems like they're on fire right now as far as their, um, Games and, yeah. DNA twenty three and me to tracking yeah, DNA to yep. quantum computing, um name it. Biological, epigenetic. Yeah, it's robotic. just um you you just look in the news and, and it's you know something to do with quantum entanglement or um like you said, DNA or something that's advancing in science and um but more and more i'm I'm, you know seeing that that it's uh you know science and you know science and spirituality are starting to coalesce and um that's a good thing i think you know they're they're starting starting to prove each other and um not not be so at odds thank you for the link owen Interesting that article. Wow. Yeah, that's. Three, so, I mean, I've, that's sad. That is. I mean, when you think of everything else. But yeah, those those on. those trees are those tresses were. I still think they were in the tons as far as. As far as their weight and um, man, it's massive. Unbelievable. But anyway, well, um, we have we've gone on for about an hour and a half now, and um, I guess we're going to call it a night. Uh, do you have anything to add before we close, Sue Ellen? Um, no, I think we brought up a lot of really neat stuff. I mean, there's just so many other um, some studies to bring up like the ones that you're talking about and they're all pretty much, you know, saying the same thing that they're really close to kind of getting things figured out. What mm-hmm. this is all about. 
<laughs> yeah, it's um, it's never ending. That's for sure, and it's um, certainly certainly an exciting time to be alive and be aware of what's going on. Um, anyway, um, if if you want to um, uh, contact us, you can contact us at um, the Texasist podcast at gmail.com or you can go to our website at um, www.thetexasist-podcast.com um, and um, we'll um, if don't if, forget to like and share yeah, yeah like and subscribe and share yeah. um, we appreciate it and, um, yeah, Mona says it's a scary time to be alive and all that. Yeah. yeah. Well, scary. Yeah, I guess. It is, especially for people. If you can imagine people that are just new to all this, just waking up and, you know, how mm-hmm. it must be with science and everything, where it's at now. You could just have woken up. I mean, geez. Right. Yeah, it would certainly that's be a overwhelming. Lot, that's a lot to process. I mean, I know mine has been slow, but at least it's been, you know, happening mm-hmm. for years and years and years. Exactly. Yeah, it would be overwhelming. That's why I can see where, you know, I would work and say, well, people would die from fright. That's the only so, just challenge is just to make you feel alive. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, will. exactly. <laughs> That's, I guess, the duality we were just talking about. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks, everyone, thank for you. taking part in the live chat. And um, thank you for thank those you of you that are listening and um, those of you that are listening to the rebroadcast. We appreciate you. And on YouTube, if you would, um, hit the um, subscribe button and the like button. We appreciate it. Anyway, um, well, thank you, Elaine, and good night, everyone. Have a great night, and we will see you next time. Good night.